Hi, my name is Erica. Welcome to the channel. In this video, I am going to be talking about five ways that you can organize toys. These are the five things that I actually do to situate and organize toys. In no way is this a perfect organization system. Yes, we have toys strewn about from day to day. Some days it's very clean and some days we play with a lot of toys and there's a lot of cleanup to do. But I'm going to share with you the five things that we do. So the first one is to hide them behind the couch. <laughs> I have a toy bin behind the couch. It used to have a lid. Um, the kids used it as a bridge for going from the couch to the ottoman. And when they stepped on it, it broke because it's, it's not a bridge, it's a lid. It's hidden by the couch. So if somebody comes over, we can do a super fast toy cleanup and toss everything in this bin. There's no organization inside this bin really, except for maybe like mesos in a basket and the magnets are in a bag. But other than that, everything just gets tossed in here and they play with this toy bin all day. It's in our family room and uh, so it's easy access for them. Number two is a kid's shelf in their closet. So my daughter has this frozen to shelf in her closet and it came with bins and she keeps all of her dollhouse stuff, her Barbie stuff, her doll stuff, books, whatever she wants to keep in her room and hide from her brothers, she keeps in here so that she can just basically take a, a bin out from her shelf and go over to her dollhouse and play with her dollhouse or she can play dolls with her high chair, her cooking, her play kitchen stuff. Those are the things that she really treasures as toys and so she has them organized in her room. A third idea is cotton rope baskets. We have a ton of these. The dog has chewed the handles on most of them, but this one is a large cotton rope basket. We've used it for a long time for train tracks. All three kids of mine love their train track set. These train tracks were gifted down from my mother who bought them for my nephew, who is now in college. So he doesn't play with them anymore. And they're for my kids and they'll go on to the next set of cousins. Uh, when my kids grow out of them. A fourth idea is storage bins with locking handles. This is what I've been using for Legos lately. I've been trying to conquer Lego organization. I'm just failing. <laughs> it's really hard to keep Legos organized. We had it almost done by color and then we were gonna put the kits back together and we started playing with them and they just got everywhere and so now all the colors are mixed up again. So the idea was really good, but we couldn't follow through. So if you have any really good ideas for Lego organization, please leave the comments below. So what I use are these locking bins so that when we're playing with Legos, we can make a big, huge mess. So we clean up all the Legos. We can lock them back up in these storage bins and then they're just sitting in our sunroom right now. We're storing Legos in our sunroom. The weather is really nice and they can just go get a bin and build. And my fifth organization idea is bags. Maybe it's a reusable like Ziploc bag. That's what we use for Play-Doh and sand. Anything like that gets, in the, gets put in these reusable plastic bags. Um, this sand that we have is a kinetic sand. I think it's called Why Matter or something. I'll leave a link below if I can find it. Um, it's It doesn't leave a mess. It doesn't get sand everywhere. Um, and it's they can create all different kinds of shapes. They really love it. My son actually refers to it as his, his favorite building material. <laughs> but it does stain the hands while they're playing. But it washes right off. It washed off with one wash. I do want to talk about these school trays for one minute. That's what they're called, school trays. We use ours a lot. <laughs> you can see there's stains and coloring from art projects, but this is a great way to keep messes in one spot on the tray. So Play-Doh, sand, painting, water play, or maybe you have some sort of a marble game or something like that that you wanna contain. These trays are awesome. I'll leave a link for it in the description box. You could use reusable Ziploc bags, mesh bags. We have this reusable drawstring bag for magnet pieces. Um, so it keeps everything together. Um, and then this just becomes portable wherever in the house you wanna play or if you wanna take it to a friend's house or something like that. So as a minimalist, we've been decluttering so much stuff and toys absolutely was among the list. And we decluttered two bins of toys and they now have far less toys than they ever had before. And their focus on toys is greater. They play with toys longer. They build more things. They're more imaginative. They're more creative, which is something I didn't really give a lot of thought to when they had a ton of toys. The toys were always situated in storage bins and readily available to them, but they had so many 
available to them that they would just dump a bin and then move on. Cleanup was a difficulty. Um, they would play with something for five minutes and then move on to something else because there was so much for them to choose from that they couldn't focus their attention. And now with a limited number of toys that are available to them and organized in the five ways that I talked about, they play longer and more intentionally with the toys that they do have. Thank you for watching. Click subscribe if you want more videos about living with less.